in Kensington, a local pastor is bringing community groups together. He says it is key in combating the opioid crisis. Yes, this is Emma Street. This is also one of the one of the four bridges that people came to as a result of being pushed out from Gurney Street. Uh, Emma Street poses a different problem, uh, or more of a, uh, uh, a more aggressive here on Emma Street. Here you have you have drug dealing, you have prostitution, uh, you have local drug dealers that have targeted and are constantly preying on these people. They have claimed territory and even the police. They come through here with extreme caution. The pain, the devastation, and the dangers of the opioid epidemic gripping the nation clearly present on Emerald Street. And along parts of another well-known street just a block away. This is an encampment here right on Frankfurt Avenue. Driving through the Kensington neighborhood in Philadelphia with Reverend Richard Harris Sr., pastor of Firm Hope Baptist Church, he shares on this warm fall day how the opioid crisis has had a profoundly chilling impact on this community and its residents. The population is becoming more younger and younger that are users and record shows, especially with the opioid and with the availability of being able to get them from their doctors from the farmers and the ease of availability that's another contributor to the growth of it so i don't think it has peaked and i don't think it's going to peak but he hasn't lost the will to fight this battle harris who does drug counseling in kensington shares openly that he knows a lot about it personally because he himself was addicted to drugs for eight years it started early in my teenage years with alcohol and then with I uh, started with speed and that crossed over into cocaine. And I relate that because again, there go I but by God's grace. And that message of grace that Harris has shared many times resonated with Rodney Walker. He's one of the many volunteers and community leaders who meet at Firm Hope to discuss community issues and provide resources. Walker says what Harris told him and others in the grip of addiction two and a half years ago helped to save his life. I heard this gentleman share a story shared his story and, and, and some, some great wisdoms. And I was totally taken. I was totally like, because he, he shared almost my story. Walker, now drug free, is 53. But he doesn't hesitate to mention that his many bouts with drugs spanned 43 years of his life. Walker says it started with alcohol and marijuana in his teenage years. And then it became pill speed, meth, and it progressed on from there. Then it went into, through the 80s and 90s. It became uh, cocaine and crack cocaine. Through some injuries, I got introduced into opiates. And uh, from there, I went on from there to go into a harder opiate, which was heroin. One day, I found myself laying on my back and a bunch of paramedics laying, uh, standing over top of me. That was the first time I died. But Walker has lived to tell his story and is helping others. Gloria Cartagena, meantime, a 25-year resident of Kensington and a block leader, hopes to hear more stories of recovery where she lives. Her organization focuses on cleaning up the streets and helping those who are dealing with homelessness, while also trying to help reduce the dangers that she says children in particular in the area are facing. Drugs, needles, mainly the needles. That's our concern because of the children in the area. So what we're trying to do is try to get that bad rap out of Kensington and let know there's some good people here that really care. And we're trying to beautify and get it back to what it was. New apartments and housing sprouting up throughout parts of the area are among clear signs of an emphasis on that renewal in Kensington. But grave statistics on the opioid epidemic and the view by some experts that the crisis still hasn't peaked makes changing how some people view Kensington challenging. No, it does. It does hurt. Um, there are certain folks who clearly only want to communicate that Kensington is a place of hopelessness. Um, but that's not the whole story. Kensington is a, a vibrant place, a place of, of strength. But helping, according to Reverend Harris, are a number of initiatives by the city, including to reduce overdoses, increase treatment options, and reduce the number of people who are unsheltered. And he believes his faith calls him to reach as many people as possible in person who are struggling. We walk them all the major areas that are hardest hit with the homeless situation, with the drug use, I build a small, quick rapport with them. How long have they been out there? How's the family? What were some of the triggers? What were some of the things that led them into that path of life? Um, sometimes I share my own story with them. His own story and sometimes a prayer. 
you know, whether they be Catholics or Baptists or Lutherans, a lot of them have had or brought up in some spiritual practice, some faith, say faith aspects. And many of them still have a, a deep-seated belief in the Lord. And we find out that majority of these people are not bad people. Majority of those people have, you know, their conscience is still active. They still have a heart. And it's the addiction that, that's their biggest, biggest problem. Next, we head back to our PHL 17 studios for a town hall on Voices Rising, solutions to the opioid epidemic. Stay with us for that. <laughs>